and I just want to have a look at every single one of you in the room here have held Sachin Tendulkar's hand. I'm going to get to that and tell you how that's happened. Okay. I'm the writer, but he starts with the suspense. <laughs> okay. We'll all find out the answer to that at the end, right? Correct. So, Parry, they just introduced you. Leadership, performance, coach. Honestly, like, and I, I have done a fair bit of motivational speaking myself. But before that, in my previous life, I was in a corporate. This is a suit I'm wearing. I, get, I don't get to wear a suit now, only ET Summit I wear it now. But I was in the corporate, like a lot of people here, and I used to go to these corporate retreats. And motivational speakers, leadership coaches would come. And honestly, I used to think it's all a big scam. Like, we have just come to Goa to drink, and now we can't say that, so we have to have somebody. But now I do that job sometimes, and now I have someone like you who's even like coached the Indian cricket team. Firstly, I have changed my mind now, by the way. I do think it works. I want to know your take on it. Does it work? And what frame of mind should one be in to make it work? Before I ask you what, how does it work, what is the blueprint of success? So first tell me, how should people take this performance leadership coach thing? Why do you need one? How does it work? So I think, I mean, that in itself is a really good question. Thanks, Chetan. Um, you know, there's, there's a difference between motivation and inspiration. And motivation, by definition, is if I stand up and give you a motivational speak, I stand here and motivation means to move. I move you and get you excited. The reality is that motivation or excitement is going to drift off and is going to go away after a while. Whereas from an inspiration perspective and what we want to be doing as a coach is inspiring people to think differently. And when we think differently about something we've thought about all the time, we can't unthink that. And hopefully in our conversation now, instead of motivating people to go, yes, we can do it, hopefully in our conversation, and certainly what's happened for me listening to the, the speakers before, is it's got me to think differently about a few things I either haven't thought about or given me ideas about things I've thought about but got me to think differently. And that lasts for a long time. Definitely. Okay, so since we have limited time, 900 seconds session, 15 minutes, and we've used up some of that, blueprint of success, what, what is the path to success? For anybody who wants to be successful or is successful but be more successful or is successful in some areas but is failing in other areas, what is the path to success for Paddy Upton? The path to success, we, we have to get to the very simple version given the time, but for me there's... There's two pieces to that. Number one is, I think success is very, it's got a very limited definition for many people. That success in the, whether it's the workspace or on the sports field is only 50, about 50% 50 of success. For me, the other 50% and personally that is the way more important 50% is, am I successful in terms of the kind of human being that I am? Am I being a good human being in relation to other people, in relation to communities, in relation to the environment. So when someone for me is a great athlete and a great human being, one of the best examples that I've got, and I've been lucky to work with him a lot, is a Rahul Dravid. Great athlete, great human being. For me, that's success. The blueprint to success is, again, two pieces to simplify it. There is a path to success, and along that path, there's a whole lot of ingredients, and that's well writ uh, written about. There's, it's well documented. It's different for individuals, but there are no secrets of what are the ingredients on the path to success. The process is important, and the process really is act, do something that's going to help set up success, learn from what you've done, go again, learn from what you've done, go again. So, and what you do, as I said, it's well documented. It's important that we take action, we learn, we act, we learn, we act, we learn, and that's a fast process. But the piece that's not spoken about very much is the other path to success is actually the distractions. What are the things that naturally distract us from success? And I think that's probably more of an important conversation. It's a deeply personal conversation that we need to have with ourselves is, what are the things that is holding me back? Because we know all the things we need to be doing, but what are the things that are holding us back? Go on. What's holding us back? Well, what, what, is, what have you seen most commonly? Well, there's external obstacles, and it's very easy to blame those, and it's very nice. 
The inner obstacles, I'd say probably the three most significant obstacles to success that we place in our own way is one, it's some version of doubt, insecurity, negative thinking, uh, and then fear and pressure. So they are mental obstacles and Every single, I've never worked with an athlete in my life, including Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, and everyone else who doesn't have doubt at some point, fear, insecurity, pressure, negative thoughts. That is perfectly normal. What the best do is they manage their relationship with that thing smarter than others. How does one do that? I mean, I, I, if, if there is doubt, if there is... You know, sometimes crippling fear, it can be, or whatever, all these things. Are there some, especially you as a coach, what, what did you tell the Indian cricket team when they were freaking out before the 2011 final? You weren't there for this one. I wish you were there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you've told me backstage, please don't talk about this final. But that is a traumatic memory for a lot of Indians. Something like that happened even in this final. We, do, we can't really pinpoint, but obviously a team that was doing absolutely fantastic. They were crushing the enemy, uh, not enemy, opponent yeah. for uh, 10 matches and then they crumbled. And I'm sure the same bundle of nerves was happening back in 11. Yes. What did you tell them? And yeah. maybe we can learn yeah. from it. So again, it's, it's relatively simple. And the reality is the, the formula for success it is simple, it's intuitive, it's universal wisdom. I sat listening to Satguru this morning. Great wisdom, but nothing we don't know already. Just put across beautifully in a beautiful reminder. So when it comes to doubt, negativity, insecurity, imposter syndrome, pressure, fear, I get so many parents and so many athletes come to me and say, will you help me deal with this and get rid of these things? So again, I'm going to just sort of present three steps on that path of managing those kind of negative thoughts or limiting thoughts is on the one side which doesn't work is to deny them, resist them, or try and fight them. Try and say it shouldn't be happening, it's wrong. I'm thinking negative thinkings, I'm thinking fearful thoughts, so I've got anxiety, there's a problem, there's something wrong. Fighting them is not the thing to do. On the other side, buying into them is probably even worse. Believing that I'm not good enough. Believing in my negative thoughts. Believing in my doubt that holds me back from doing things. That's also not a healthy relationship. The healthy relationship that I try and cultivate with athletes is to say all of those things, negativity, doubt, fear, insecurity, imposter syndrome, every one of us in this room guarantee you has that, unless you're an out-and-out -out psychopath. So what we need to do is be able to normalize that. I'm saying to you, it's okay to feel fear. It's okay for you to feel doubt. It's okay to feel pressure. That unbelievable innings that uh, Virat Kohli played at the opening game against Pakistan in Australia last year in the T20 World Cup, we would have all seen that. Virat was riddled with pressure for the first half of that innings. But what he did is he has a healthy relationship, and he goes, it's okay. It's not a problem. It doesn't mean something's wrong. So I normalize it. I embrace it. And then what the really good athletes do is they fade it into the background, like background music in a restaurant. And they fade in the background. They don't try and get rid of it. They don't try and believe in it. And then they just focus on what's important. And they make the important things important. So Virat carried on batting. He needed to focus on the ball, keep an eye on the scoreboard, and keep his mo innings moving forward, despite the fact that this doubt and negativity and pressure was going on. He accepted it and felt the pressure and continued anyway. So if you feel those things, there's nothing wrong with you, it's nothing you need to change or get rid of, embrace it, have a good relationship with it, and then come back to the path to success, which is doing the kind of things that move me forward, either acting or learning and constantly doing both. So here, let's say somebody here is working and they don't like, they've, they've been wanting to open their own startup. Somebody here wants to go on a fitness journey and they've flopped so many times that they're like, I'm going to fail again, you know. I'll never lose weight or I'll never become fit or whatever. And this, this is the same fear, doubt, all these things happening in their head. Should they just be okay with those feelings and are, they, are those going to remain even though they open their startup and it's all going on for years? They stay. Those voices never go away. And you're saying work with them? Is that what? So those voices don't go away. They might minimize a little bit. 
But we know intuitively, particularly if you're going into a startup, the path to success is riddled with failure. We have failure along the way and success and failure and success and failure and success. And we constantly vacillate between those. And the thing is, when you fail, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means today it didn't work. We extract the lesson and we get smarter for tomorrow. If you succeed today, it doesn't mean you're great. It doesn't mean you're a success. It just means today I did well, extract the lesson and go again tomorrow. Because the game of sport, the game of business, the game of life is a medium to long-term gain game. It's a path that is riddled with success, failure, with success, failure. And the problem, certainly in sport, is when we start attaching our identity and ourself to our results. If you do well, you're not a success. You just got, you did well this time. If you do badly, you're not a failure. It's just you've gone through an experience, and the smart people learn from the experience, good and bad. Okay, that's really well put. I have a minute left, so I'm not going to ask you another question because we want to know how we all held such in sand. So, talking about normalizing and accepting, when the Indian team was preparing for the 2011 Cricket World Cup, no team at that point had ever won a World Cup at home, and the thinking behind that or the understanding at the time was the pressure of playing at home was just too much. We knew playing a home final in India in the Wanky D Stadium in Mumbai in Sachin Tendulkar's final World Cup was going to be the highest amount of pressure any player had ever played under, in, probably in cricket history. We needed to prepare the Indian players for the pressure and expectation of 1.3 billion fans. And we spoke about it. And the idea was it's not to get rid of the pressure and expectation. It's not to succumb to the pressure. And the language we used is when we walk out into the field for every World Cup game, you do not have the pressure and expectation of 1.3 billion Indians on your shoulders. When you walk out, put your hands down, and there's 1.3 billion fans holding your hand walking out with you. And in that way, that's clearly what we did in the final, and you guys held Sachin in everyone's hand as you walked onto the field, and that's how we normalized the pressure. That's right. Thank you so much, Paddy. I think we have time's up, and <laughs> thank you for this wonderful session. Awesome. And I really wanted to ask you... Okay, ask me. The, before the, they come. Before, before they chase motion. us off. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi yesterday spoke about the new India, and this is India's time. As a writer, as a journalist in your space, what does that mean for you who with a pen gets to speak to so many billion or billion Indians? Yeah. I think, you know, like, like whether it's at an individual level, motivation, or at a national level, self-belief matters. What you are saying is there will be fear, there will be doubt. Of course, we Indians know we have so many problems, so many potholes, so many things are not right in our country. Still, we know that. But like you said, you have to deal with those voices and play and still try to win. I think there is value in a nation also knowing, yes, we have problems, but having a lot of confidence and optimism. Whether this is India's time or not, we must believe this is India's time. Only then it will be India's time. Because you can't say, maybe it's not India's time, maybe it's India's time. You'll never achieve it then. But the, it's like the same thing. You deal with the fear, uncertainty, doubt, FUD or whatever and just say, we need that optimism. So the Prime Minister saying it has a lot of value because he's the top person in the country and saying, this is our time. So all of a sudden, millions start believing that. And once people start believing it, it, it happens. That's how it happens in sports too. We're going to win. Okay, you probably are going to win then. Yes, you need to believe is the, is the start. What you need to do is take action. And even if you don't believe, you take the right action, it will be India's time, even if you don't quite believe. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and I cool. think, Chetan, if I could just add to that, it's also the resilience that Indians have. Something that Safi Rauf had also spoken about, right. the resilience, which will add to that collective conscience that this is our yeah. time. But uh, definitely, uh, okay. so, uh, right after you said Sachin Tendulkar, I think everyone in this <laughs> room, right at the beginning of the session, has been hooked onto this okay. conversation. Thank you very much awesome. for that.